Okay, so the topic that we're talking about is what's called the Meiji Restoration, and we'll define exactly what that means in a little bit. But again, this is Japan's kind of reaction to imperialism. That's really what we're talking about. All right, I'll give you a second here. All right, so <clears throat> when we talked about imperialism in China, we told the story of how China was imperialized by the British with the Opium War and uh, the Treaty of Nanjing and, and the establishment of spheres of influence. And then we talked about how China reacted to that. We talked about the Chinese Revolution and the fact that a lot, a big part of the population of China um, kind of resented their government for allowing imperialism to take place. Well, that similar kind of thing is going to happen in Japan. When Japan is, quote unquote, opened by the Americans, and then a lot of other countries join in also, um, for a long time, Japan was isolated, right? And, and they kind of had a very autonomous culture that was their own. Um, but imperialism changed that. And a lot of the people in Japan resent the Japanese government for allowing imperialism to take place. So a group of prominent samurai, don't forget this is still, you know, the feudal system, a group of prominent samurai called the Satcho Alliance, um, basically plot to overthrow uh, the shogun and kind of take over the government, which they basically do. Um, they, they do this because they are angry with the government for allowing uh, Im imperialism to take place. So uh, they are kind of clinging on to traditional um, ideals, at least for a long time. Um, at first, they're resistant to kind of Western uh, influence, which is why they were isolated for so long. But they they quickly realized that they kind of had it backwards, and that they really did need to modernize kind of industrially, economically, socially, they needed their hands on new technology, they needed to modernize industry, military, uh, things like that. So they kind of did a 180. And from there on in, now that the government has been overthrown, the focus will kind of be on modernization. I'll give you a second here. All right. So uh, this, this kind of rebuilding or this building up of Japan will be referred to as what's called the Meiji Restoration. The Meiji Restoration is named after a guy whose name was Matsuhito. Uh, he was eventually referred to as Meiji for short. Um, and his reign is called what's called the Enlightened Rule or the Meiji Restoration. So during this time period, uh, Japan is going to do a couple of things. They are going to invite, they go, they kind of do a 180, like we said. At first, they resist kind of westernization and modernization. And eventually, what they do is they kind of flip around and do a 180. And they are inviting foreigners into Japan uh, for the purposes of modernizing. So they can kind of lead the way with modernization. So a lot of um, these, these foreign dignitaries that are kind of uh, from industrialized, developed nations are invited to come into Japan to try to help them get up to speed on military, industry and factories, railroads and transportation, uh, education, and a variety of other things. So when we say the Meiji Restoration, what is it? Uh, it is this period of enlightened rule where they are trying to modernize. So from a perspective of what's happening here, this is Japan's reaction to imperialism. America cracks them open, and this is the result of that. It is them kind of eventually becoming enlightened to the developments around the world and wanting to get up to speed with a lot of the things that they've been missing out on because they were in this kind of Tokugawa isolationist policy for so long. And that's really kind of their reaction uh, to imperialism. 